Well, hi there. If you follow this channel, you probably know how much I love Argentine black and white tegus. And if you're pretty into tegus, you probably know there are some other rad tegus out there, like Cayman lizards, red tegus, gold tegus, Colombian black and white tegus. But what if I would be to tell you that there are a whole lot of tegus out there that most people, even people that are way into tegus, might not even know exist. The first tegu on this list was actually what got me going down this rabbit hole of how many tegus are out there that I've never even heard of before. One of my friends from Peru posted some pictures of a lizard that he referred to as an iguana chilena, which means a Chilean iguana. But looking at it, I was like, that doesn't look like an iguana to me. It looks like a tegu but I've never seen one that looks like this before. And so I started doing more research on this iguana chilena, and it turns out it totally is a tegu. It's known in English as the Chilean dwarf tegu, Calopistus maculatus. They're also known as spotted false monitors, though I will tell you that of the tegus that most of us have never heard of, this one isn't the one that looks the most like a monitor to me. So stay tuned for that one. This Chilean dwarf tegu gets to be about 20 inches long, and like most tegus, they're expert hunters. Males seem to get the big, boofy jowls that are typical of male tegus, which is stinking rad. They've got the forked tongue, which is actually typical of all teid lizards, so you're gonna see that in all of these. Interestingly enough, you don't find this in iguanas. They actually, as it turns out, used to be fairly common in the pet trade here as imports, and apparently, they were amazing pets, but they proved to be very, very difficult to breed. Maybe, you know, impossible, at least at the time. And so they have vanished nearly completely from the pet trade. And it's too bad that we weren't successful breeding them because they look like they're awesome. If you follow this channel or you have a moderate interest in big lizards, then you are probably familiar with Cayman lizards. Specifically, you are probably familiar with the northern Cayman lizard, Dracania guianensis. But, as Yoda said, there is another. The Paraguayan Cayman lizard, Dracania paraguayensis. These are found unsurprisingly in Paraguay, but also in Brazil and Bolivia. What this lizard lacks in the bright colors found in the northern caiman lizard, it makes up for in looking a heck of a lot more like an actual caiman. Honestly, the bright colors of the northern caiman lizard is one of my favorite and least favorite parts of those caiman lizards because they're strikingly beautiful, but it almost ruins their caiman effect. This one totally has that. Based on the limited information I could find from a Spanish-speaking scientific journals. These Paraguayan caiman lizards seem to get to be about the same size as the northern caiman lizard, and they still feed primarily on snails. So really similar, totally different color. I'd like to take just a moment to thank our patrons at Patreon. Hopefully you guys are getting to discover some things you didn't know about before, and I gotta tell you, because of our patrons at Patreon, we as a channel are getting to take strides forward that we never even dreamed would be possible for us. So thank you guys so much for all that you do. You are so appreciated. Next on our list is a tegu I discovered probably about a year ago, and actually, it is part of the reason that when I discovered this iguana chilena, I started to wonder, golly, how many more might there be out there that I've never heard of? This particular tegu is called the crocodile tegu, Crocodilurus amazonicus. This is a monotypic genus, Crocodilurus, so this is the only species in the genus. They are semi-aquatic, and they've got kind of a longish snout, I suppose, for a tegu, but unlike the caiman lizards, I really don't think these look very much like a crocodilian at all. I'm not quite sure why they're called crocodile tegus. They look a bit like water skinks, um, maybe like a semi-aquatic monitor, like Asian water monitors or Dumeril's monitors, but uh, not like crocodilians. That said, they can have really beautiful coloration. Red spots are not uncommon, especially in juveniles, but it seems like they hold that coloration into adulthood. They feed on arthropods, amphibians, other reptiles, and fish. 
Mm, that's pretty hardcore. They are available in the pet trade from time to time, but they're hyper expensive and not very much is known about their care. And they are sympatric with the caiman lizards, which means they exist in the same habitats, in the same places. So you could potentially go to one location and see caiman lizards, which look like crocodilians, and crocodile tegus, which don't. Next on our list of Tegus you've probably never heard of is the Peruvian false monitor, Calopistus flavipunctatus, which is the same genus as the iguana chilena, which isn't an iguana, and this is a false monitor, which at least they're telling you it's not a real monitor because it's not. Monitors are an old world group, and the Teids are a new world group, but I gotta tell you, this is the one that I think really does look a heck of a lot like a monitor lizard. These guys are found in Peru and Ecuador. They've got a leaner body and kind of a smaller head than most conventional tegus, and that I think is what contributes so much to them looking so much like a monitor lizard, because tegus already resemble in some ways monitor lizards. This one takes it to the next level. The similarities between the tegus generally, and especially these false monitors, and the true monitor lizards are due to something called convergent evolution. There are two reasons why organisms that are not the same species can be very, very similar one to the other. One of these reasons is because of shared ancestry. This is called homology. This is when organisms have similar attributes that they both inherited from a common ancestor that had those attributes as well. The other way that you could get two organisms that aren't the same species but are very, very similar is due to something called convergence. And this is driven by similar environmental pressures that select for similar behaviors or similar looks, and this is called analogy. This is what we are seeing with these guys. The teid lizards and the varanid lizards have sort of filled the niche of a big carnivorous, or omnivorous in the case of some of the teid lizards, lizard in the new world and the old world respectively. They've got a lot of really similar techniques that they use to hunt as a result of being lizards, both of them, and as a result of the fact that they're both hunting big vertebrate prey which is just stinking rad. Last on our list of five tegus you've probably never heard of is Tupanambus matipu. I'm only giving you a scientific name because to my knowledge, that's all we have at this point. This particular species of tegu was only discovered in 2018 in Brazil. And not too much is known about them because they were only recently discovered. As a result, there are no common names, at least that I know of, for this lizard at this point. However, they are stinking rad and I'm excited to find out more about them. And I've got just a little extra bonus for you. This is not a tegu, but it is a teid lizard that I think you should know exists, and that is the rainbow whip tail. They've got kind of a short body and an ultra long tail. They look really cool. Yeah, I think you can see why you should know about it. It's unbelievably glorious. It's not necessarily that obscure, but everyone who likes any sort of teed lizard should know about these, so now you know. So, now that we have gone through five tegus you've probably never heard of, and one whip tail, which everyone should hear about, which ones were new to you? Which ones did you know before? And what reptile group should we cover next? As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. Dimmer, can you just hang out for a second? No, nope. roll over. Oh boy. But what if I would be to? Oh jeez. Paper dolls aren't anything. This day, man, or does? Wow, he's really pushing. Oh, it's gonna be a good one. That's amazing. <laughs> what a day! Don't sit in it. Oh. Don't rub it in the table. Oh. <laughs> That's how he wipes. I need to sneeze. Got it. Yeah. Do you have a sneeze stopping technique? No. I let it roll. You... I try to encourage them. I do open mouth in front of Michelle as close you as possible. You liar. If you, need, if you need to stop a sneeze, you have no strategy? I just hold, it back. I just hold my breath. 
real hard. Hold your breath real hard. I've never thought of that. Yeah. What what I discovered some years back is if you push your tongue hard into the roof of your mouth, it really equalizes the oh. the pressure and That's what I do when I'm trying not to yawn. Mmm. <laughs> Crocodilurus Amazonicus!